All right. I knew that ChatGPT blew everyone's minds, right? It felt like Skynet's slightly less murdery cousin just showed up. But what if the real AI titan isn't the one that's grabbing the headlines, but the company that's already run half of your digital life? Yes, I'm talking about Google. Well, OpenAI was just launching rockets. Google was building the entire launch base. Stick with me in the next few minutes because I'm gonna dive in why Google slow and steady approach might win the AI marathon. First up, Google and AI aren't a new couple. They have been all hot and heavy for over 20 years. Seriously, where everyone was maybe using the dial-up internet connection, Google was already neck deep in machine learning. Do you know Transformer? Not the Michael Bay's movie, I'm talking about the magical sauce inside model like the chat GPT-4. It's the T inside the GBT. Google researcher invented that back in 2017. They basically dropped the mic with paper that kick-started this whole AI large language model craziness right now. It's like they invented the engine of cars that every car right now using. And that's not one hit like wonder. Do you know TensorFlow? Jacks, it's Google babies. They have the habit of building everything themselves, like some kind of obsessive Lego master, from the AI model like the Gemini to the actual ship in their own data centers. Now it's get a little bit ridiculous. Google ecosystem. How much Google stuff do you touch by day? Search, Gmail, YouTube, Maps, your Android phone, Google Docs maybe? It's like a digital Hydra. You cut one head, two more Google services will pop up. And this isn't just about being a bubbler, it's about the connection. Google can integrate AI into everything we're already using right now. Suddenly, search gives you answer before you finish typing. Gmail write your awkward apology email for you. Maps know where the traffic jam will happen before it starts. It's not some separated app you need to install, it's just there, making things smarter. This scale is nuts. Google search have 90% of the market. 90. That's almost everyone on earth asking dumb questions, deep questions, weird questions, billions of times by day. Google Workspace have a 3 billion user. Androids, billions more. That give Google two scary things. The first one, you're kinda stuck. Switching your whole digital life is a pain. So when Google rolls out any AI feature, billion will get them instantly. The second one is data. The holy cow of AI, data. Training AI is like feeding a starving monster. And Google owns the world's biggest all-you-can-eat buffet of data. And it's coming from a real-time human behavior. They don't need to scrap old websites like some other AI companies say they do. They say what you're searching for right now and what kind of video are trending today. How people actually talk and ask a question in the wild. Trying to compete with this kind of data is like trying to build sandcastle against a tsunami. Now Google covered the data part. What about how they gonna train these giant models? What kind of requirement do you need? Google realized early on that buying ships from other wasn't gonna cut it if they wanted to rule the world. So they built their own. Meet Tensor Processing Units, TBUs. Forget your fancy gaming GPUs that we're using right now to run large language model. These things are custom Silicon Ninja built for one purpose only, crashing AI math. They're hyper optimized for machine learning, making training faster, and more efficient for Google. That will give them total control. Software and hardware designed together, it will be less reliance on a company like NVIDIA and the crazy GPU market. They can't build as much AI muscle as they need. And now let's talk about the AI itself, Gemini. This Google flagship AI is their answer to ChatGPT and beyond. And it got some cool tricks. The big one is being natively multi-model. It sounds fancy, I know, but it just means that Gemini was designed from the start to understand everything at once. Text, images, audio, videos, code. It doesn't need different models 
glued together. You feed it in a video, you ask in a question about an idea, you point to something in a picture, it gets the whole context that will make the interaction with it so smooth and much smarter. And their latest version, Gemini 2.5, they're showing this clear improvement in reasoning. It's right now the current AI king for coding. It seems like it's actually think problems through step by step before answering, the less random guessing, more logical detection. Plus, it's having an insane context window. It's the AI short term memory. It's huge. Like we're talking about the first version is 1 million tokens, and we will get the 2 million tokens version very soon, which make something like the ChatGPT model seems like a dwarf with how much you can stuff inside it. The question that asks itself right now, if Google have the history, the data, the hardware, the fancy AI power, why it was sleeping when ChatGPT exploded? The simple answer is perception. OpenAI nailed the launch of ChatGPT. It was super easy to use, fun. It felt like a new feature landed on inside your desktop. But Google being Google, the giant company that's, that's serving billions of users daily, they can't just throw half-baked AI experiment in search or Gmail. They had to be more careful. So when OpenAI was getting all the buzz and the headline and Microsoft was writing checks left and right for them, Google looked extremely slow. Their first AI model, aka Bard, was very bad. It hit the kind of meh status. Nobody cared about it. That was the problem. Perception. Even if the tech underneath it tell a different story. So what is the story? Let's look to the actual performance. Forget about the hype. Look at the benchmark. And yeah, I know benchmark can be faked, but they have some clues inside it. Recent testing comparing the Gemini 2.5 Pro to the OpenAI based model show Google isn't just playing catch up. They're actually bowling ahead in some real important areas. Gemini is doing better in complex reasoning, easing, coding, challenging. And this is crazy because Gemini models was one of the worst that you can use in coding. It right now understand images and videos, not only that, but also can modify images for you. It's absolutely smashing tasks that need huge context windows and even being great with multiple languages. Is GPT-4 still good? Yes, but for tough complex tasks that required long context, Gemini is looking like a beast. The gap everyone is talking about is closing super fast. In some way or another, Google might already be in the lead. And don't forget about integration. Google master plan isn't just selling you another subscription per month. It's speaking AI into search and Gmail, Docs, and Android, making the tools that you already pay for or use for free way much smarter. AI overviews in search, giving you quick summaries, Gemini helping you write emails. That's mean that AI becoming more useful in context. Just thinking about the last model, the Gemini 2.5 Pro, you can use it daily for free without being a single dime. If OpenAI deployed model like this, you have to pay $200 just to access it. What Google is aiming for is certain feedback loop. More user, more data, better AI, happier user, more user, and good luck with competing with this kind of feedback loop. Think of it like this. OpenAI built the rocket ship that amazed everyone, but Google has been building the entire space program. The launch pad, the mission control, the astronaut training facilities, the fuel, and now they have rockets that are just as fast, maybe slightly faster. Look, the AI war is far from over. It's gonna be extremely wild. Companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, Meta, DeepSeek, Alibaba are all doing amazing things. But don't sleep on Google. It's a long term vision foundational research, the custom hardware, the powerful model, and the deep integration into everything puts them in a very strong position. They might not 
always have the loudest hype, but they're quietly building an AI machine that might just be unstoppable in the long run. They're playing the marathon, not just a sprint. Google future look very bright. And if you find any something useful in this breakdown, please give me a like and definitely subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one.